In a butterfly's life, there are four stages. In our lives, we go through stages too. <laughs> Isabel Perez Nichols, in a part of her life now, no one saw coming. Baffled. It just made no sense. This spunky, now nearly nine year old, was diagnosed at age five with a disease few have ever heard of intracranial hypertension. Few know anything about. It's one in 100,000 people who actually have it. Basically, it means fake tumor in the head. Um, so it gives all the symptoms of a brain tumor without there actually being one in there. She gets to the point where she gets blurry vision, um, super bad headaches, like worse than any migraine, um, dizzy, balance issues, digestive issues. Um, she's lost vision in her eyes before. Um, there's been times where she says she can actually hear the fluid in her ears. But behind her, through it all, these fragile creatures with flutter and fight. This one is, open your wings. Open your wings. Laura. I just love them so much. I love I love the patterns on their wings. Uh-oh. She's always been like the butterfly that fights and goes through changes with grace. Can I show this? Color the butterfly. The bottom says, I will never stop fighting. I'm your little butterfly as well. You ready to fly too, Beth? Every day, uncertainty. Every day, a gift. And like a butterfly, she'll wait. <laughs> oh. Wait and fight for her chance to fly. She's up there. So can we find a methionine? It's a typical day at Triton High School, but behind the beakers is an underlying issue. Southeast Minnesota has a teacher shortage. Reaching a critical nature, and because of the critical nature that it's now at, it, it calls for action. Brett Joyce is the superintendent of Triton Public Schools. With almost 30 years in education, he says the issue is at its worst. Years ago when we had a position of, of uh, an opening for elementary, we'd see over 100 applicants. Now we're down to where we're seeing 25 to 30. You know, who wants to hire somebody where you have two applicants? I mean, you, you need a little competition. At Sumner Elementary in Austin. And in the past, you know, 10 years, the number of applicants that are out there um, are just dwindling rapidly. And Plainview Elgin Millville. At the high point of the numbers of applications, we received over 600 applications for one position. That no longer happens. It's an issue across the map. So who is teaching our kids? In order to find out, we had to ask, who isn't, who's missing? Education Minnesota says it's teachers of color. The schools we talked to agree. We should have about 9% of our staff um, being minority and we have zero. In Rochester Public Schools, about 36% of students are minority, and there's just more than 3% teachers of color. 1,400 students at uh, Austin High School. And in Austin, about 43% of students are of color, but only 1% of teachers reflect the same ethnicity. We've been to South Dakota, we've been to Iowa, uh, we've uh, been here in Minnesota. Not only do we want to try and increase the number of applicants that we're getting, but we'd also like to try and increase the diversity of our staff. Staff, like choir director, Maria Wilson. My father's African American, um, and my mother's half Korean, half Japanese. I love looking in my classroom and seeing the diverse faces of my students, but it's not evident in our in our teaching staff. Just seeing me in the education system, seeing a black teacher, I hope that I do inspire that they themselves can do whatever they want to do. And another group missing from elementary schools specifically is men. Like where you can truly come in and make an impact every single day. Second grade teacher Jordan Pline is an exception. A positive male role model is needed in a lot of kids' lives. In total, Austin's elementary schools average a bit more than 16% male teachers. 
In Rochester, that number is about 12 percent. Winona State faculty say it's been that way for a while. I think it's just a historical pattern that's always existed. Going to be our next set of generation teachers. They say class sizes have been holding steady, but not everyone who completes the program goes into teaching. I know of the graduating class, there were at least three I know of that no way. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do that much work for that pay. Begging the question, why are fewer teachers applying? The amount of responsibility for classroom teacher has increased mm -hmm. over the last five to ten years while the, the salaries have not kept up with that. Faculty also say class sizes and state testing pressures are pushing people away. The list goes on and on and on. Some say it's timing. Baby boomers are coming through and they're going to be retiring in the next few years. Hello, I'm Senator Al Franken. Administrators also say they're working with lawmakers on loan forgiveness for teachers. They're just starting to talk about it. In fact, it's gotten some traction at the Capitol this year. The job has to meet the debt. I have a son that's going to graduate from the University of Wisconsin Stout this year, and his starting salary in business was equal to a teacher with a bachelor's degree and 12 years experience. While the reasons for the shortage vary, one thing is hard to deny. Well, if you name a career that isn't dependent on a decent education, I'd like to hear what it is. And so I think sometimes society loses that uh, fundamental understanding that this is where it all starts. Megan Reistead, ABC 6 News. Who would have thought a commode adorned card could hold such treasure? It's been getting quite full. It reads, well, there it goes, another year down the drain. Or at least it used to. Text now barely visible after 37 years being passed birthday to birthday. We've been very careful not to lose it. And it's never been sent through the mail. Save a lot of postage because we always hand delivered it. I hope better things for you this year than last year. It must have been a bad year. Sylvia Wilson's now 87 and Harriet Hoyer 92. Yeah. And even with an address change for Harriet, the card keeps coming. We're kind of a oddity. Oh, real oddity. <laughs> and it all started on accident. When, uh, when I gave it to you, you got all but hysterical because it was, and I thought, well, that card isn't that funny. And, uh, <laughs> well, it is funny, but... And In 1979, Harriet had bought the same card for Sylvia, so they decided just one would work. Who'd have thought that we'd fill a card up like that? Well, who would think that that paper would be that good? Oh! Messages covering just a fraction of their friendship. We knew each other as teenagers, and and uh, a lot of give and take, and a lot of sorrow and happiness, and oh, we've had a, we've a, had everything. We've had a good life. A card almost yeah, full, shared, shared and two lives good. to match. Yeah. I don't know where the time goes, but it goes no. away so fast. Oh, it does. It up. really does. In St. Ansgar, yeah, Megan Rystead, ABC uh, Six News. You've got it nice out here, though.